Hello, tonight I am speaking with Cassie from Texas who has a wonderful carnivore story. Uh, but first, Cassie, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, your family, a little bit, and then um, we'll get into carnivore, why you started carnivore? Okay, so um, I'm Cassie, I'm from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I am a mom of one. Um, I and my husband own a pest control company, um, family owned and operated. So I run that behind the scenes. Um, and then I work right now nights um, at the hospital as a phlebotomist. Um, so I just run around sticking people with needles. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so terrible. So that's what a phlebotomist is. It's the person. Yes. That sticks yeah. We're the ones that come and take your blood so that uh, the testing and stuff can get done in the hospital. So. Oh, okay. I learned uh, when I was pregnant that you just become a pin cushion and <laughs> you don't care how many people are looking at your body. You get so used to it. <laughs> yep. That happens. <laughs> So yeah, so I'm 30, I'm going to be 38 in September. Okay. Um, and I have been on the carnivore journey for just a little over a year now. Um, I have had a few setbacks. <laughs> okay. Um, but that's to be expected when you're doing a big lifestyle change. Sure. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about this, but when we were emailing back and forth, we talked a lot about PCOS. Is that what brought you to carnivore or how did you, how, how did you decide to do this way of eating? So I have PCOS. Yes. That was okay. part of my reason why I went down this journey. Okay. Um, but the main thing is because I am at the age where if I want to have kids again, yeah. I have got to do something and I've got to do it soon because the time is ticking. Yeah. And so that was my big reason for doing it because I'm trying to really get my hormones balanced and, you know, not only to just deal with the PCOS, but to maybe be able and have a, a kid naturally on my own without any assistance. Oh, okay. On um, baby number one, did you do like fertility treatments? And I did one round of Coleman and we got pregnant right away, but I was doing more of a paleo diet and I had also had a DNC done um, because oh. my PCOS was so bad. Oh, wow. But not because of a miscarriage, but because they no. needed to like clean it all out so you could get pregnant. Oh, wow. Well, it wasn't necessary to get pregnant, but because I had had so many problems related to my PCOS and my cycle being out of whack. Yeah. Um, I had periods of time where I would just bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed for months. Um, and this was ongoing for years. So probably about, uh, I want to say it was like a seven or eight year stint of just the abnormal bleeding. And I just was to the point and I had found the right doctor finally. And he was like, yes, you need help and we will do a DNC. Oh, wow. So I did the, did the DNC and then I wanted to get pregnant after that. So I did the DNC. That was November of 2018. And then I decided to go on Clomid. It was, I want to say, January, February of 2019. And then okay. I conceived her Okay. with a super low dose of Clomid. Well, that's good. Congratulations. So your daughter is like five now? Yeah, she'll five? be five in November. Oh, yeah. cute. <laughs> um, was your pregnancy easy? Or was it difficult? It was difficult in a sense because I had never gone through pregnancy before, you know, first time mom and everything. Yeah. Um, but I bled for the first trimester. Uh, oh, no. From, and then part of the second trimester. So I was you... constantly stressed out and yeah. just thinking I'm losing my baby constantly. Right. Um, but she, for whatever reason, she was meant to be here, obviously. So she... Mm -hmm. She made it through and I was very, very thankful and happy for that because I thought we were going to lose her like a couple of weeks after we found out that we, you know, had conceived yeah. and everything. I'm sure. That's so scary. Were you in and out of the emergency room? Um, I did go to the emergency for the first trip when I first had the bleeding and they're like, well, you know, sometimes the pregnancy doesn't take and so there's not really anything we can do about it. And oh, so I um, didn't go back when I had the continued bleeding. I just, yeah, you know, I just stuck it out at home and just prayed. Second. Can you give me one in a second? I think I got to fix something on my internet. I hope we don't get disconnected. Okay. But it, okay. I, I want to hear you and it's not letting me hear you. So let me, we might get disconnected. Okay. I hope not.
Hello. Oh. I can hear you. Okay, you can hear me. Now your screen's all all messed up. Oh, good. Okay, perfect. We're good. <laughs> we're still recording. Okay, good. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So you were saying, and then it sounded started sounding very robotic. Um, that you just went to the emergency room once the first time it happened. Yes. Yeah. And oh, then okay. after that, um, because the doctors were pretty much gonna tell me the same thing, like there's nothing they can do because it was so early in the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just opted to stay home when I was having those issues and just do as the doctors had told me the first time. So oh, but wow. she's here, she's healthy, Yay! no problem. Very athletic, spunky, just <laughs> just awesome. yeah <laughs> she keeps me on my toes for sure yeah i'm sure i'm sure it's kind of smart to like space them out a little bit i had mine very close together and there's like pluses and minuses on both sides <laughs> we wanted to have ours close together but we like i said we've had issues with fertility on my end so yeah. it's just not happened yet i did actually um conceive um with doing Clomid again, but it took me three rounds and oh, then wow. I ultimately lost the baby. So we had lost the baby about two years ago okay. and we lost it on Christmas Eve. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, it's okay. It, it is what it is. It's to be expected, yeah. especially with the condition that I have. So, yeah, but that was why I went carnivore because it wasn't long after um, that miscarriage that I, uh, decided to do something. I was like, it's, something's got to happen. Yeah. Um, and so, like I said, when I conceived with her, the first, with, with the first child, um, I was doing more of a paleo type diet. And so I was like, yeah. yeah, definitely it could be something to do with diet. So I went, went ahead and tried carnivore, but my mom was trying to help me with my issues that I have. And she knows I wanted it to conceive again. Um, yeah. So she sent me one of Dr. Barry, Barry's videos. Um, oh, wow. He was talking to a female physician about PCOS. And in that specific video, he was talking about how he was transitioning his patients over to carnivore. And he had two um, older ladies, like in their early 50s, and they both ended up conceiving <laughs> after they went <laughs> carnivore. So I was like, if they can conceive at that age, why mm -hmm. can't I? So yeah. I was like, it's worth a shot. If it doesn't work, the only thing that's different is that I'm just eating different. So I was like, yeah, right. it's worth a shot. Sure. And But you've been eating this way now for like a year. Yes, just a little over a year. Okay. Um, I don't want to, it's such a tough subject, but if you want me not to, if you don't want me to, if you don't want to answer questions, you don't have to because it's okay. like fertility, but and I can edit it out. But have you guys been trying in the last year or you're like trying to fix your body a little bit and then try it? Um, no, we've been trying. Oh, okay. <laughs> we, we don't prevent it. <laughs> oh, okay. You're not preventing it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've, well, we've been actively trying while I'm still trying to fix my body and repair things. So, I mean, if yeah. it happens, we're, we're all about it. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh man. I'm sure it's going to happen any day. I, I hope so. <laughs> we need do a blessing you, in our family right now. So Yeah, I understand. Do you track your cycle? This is not really a uh, carnivore I conversation. I try so, to, but it's yeah. really hard with the PCOS. And yeah. honestly, I haven't really gotten to a regularity yet. Oh, okay. So I don't know if it's just because the amount of healing that my body has to do was so mm -hmm. much. Yeah. Um, But here recently, it's been like every other month i've been oh having wow so that's oh, more than what's normal for me because i could go for six months without having one or oh, wow. i could go where i'm bleeding for months so it's like it's very sporadic there's no consistency to my irregularity <laughs> yeah i understand <laughs> um have you ever tried and this is not carnivore so whatever but have you ever tried taking evening primrose oil um, I did in the past. Um, oh, okay. I didn't really notice any difference. Um, oh, okay. But that was with me being on a standard American diet, eating whatever I wanted to, whenever I wanted to. So sure. Yeah. I um, but I've kind of been more strict with the, like, since I went on the carnivore, like I was all in or nothing when I first started. <laughs> like I said, I've kind of slipped up a little bit here and there. Yeah. Uh, I, I think everyone does. <laughs> yeah. My, my biggest thing was I went back to work on nights and, um, I just wanted a little extra pick me up 
to get me through the nights because I'm up at 8 a.m. So and then I'm working oh, wow. nights. So I'm I'm doing almost 20 hours of being awake when I'm oh, awake my for the weekend shifts, at least on Friday oh. night. Saturday is different because I'm sleeping okay. during the day. But Friday I'm up yeah. from 8 a.m. because I'm, I'm working the pest control business, watching kids. And then yeah. I get get to go to work at nine o'clock at night. So I just don't there's no time for me to get a nap in there. Oh no, that's terrible. That's uh, yeah. so is it just Friday or how many days are you doing? Um, I work Friday and Saturday. So Friday night's my long day or my long oh. day because I'm doing the pest control and then going into the night shift at the hospital. Yeah. yeah. Um Saturday I, I get off at like uh between five and six AM. I go home okay. and then I actually get to sleep. Okay. Um, so I'll get up at like two o'clock in the afternoon, get a little time with my family, and then I go to work at nine again, and then that's oh. my last shift. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Oh my goodness. Days a week. It, it's kind of yeah. rough right now, but hopefully things are starting to iron out, and then I don't have to be working as much, especially those crazy hours. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh man, night shift terrible. Yeah, I get more <laughs> sleep this way though because I was um, having to get up and be at work at between four and five a.m. Oh, um, no. And I, I go to bed super late as it is. So I kind of switched my hours because I'm like, I'm already awake. I might as well just stay awake. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. I understand. So I just switched it. But there's no way I could have done this the way I'm working now but prior to carnivore. No way. Oh, wow. OK, that's good to know. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, what other changes in your body or mind have you noticed eating this way? Um, Definitely the sleeping. Um, yeah. Like. I, so I used to work a, a nine to five or eight to five job um, okay. when I was on standard American diet. And oh my gosh, I kid you not. I dreaded waking up in the morning. I woke <laughs> up as if I had didn't even get any sleep at all. Like oh, I just no. was ready to get back in bed and go back to sleep and yeah. chronically fatigued all day long. It didn't matter mm -hmm. how much coffee I had. It didn't matter how much sleep I got the night before. I was just exhausted. Um, so there was no way I could work work crazy hours like I am now prior to carnivore. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Oh wow! So your sleep is better, and you have more energy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm I'm able to do more things and do things that I want to do because. But prior to that, I didn't have any energy when I got home from work at five six o'clock at night to do anything, but barely cook myself something to eat. And usually, I got something from a drive through because I didn't feel like cooking. Yeah. And just go to bed. <laughs> Important question. Was it Whataburger? <laughs> um, no, not back then, but it is Whataburger now because of carnivore. I can roll through the drive through and I can get the big patties and oh, wow. uh, hard boiled eggs. So that like when oh. I'm in a pit, that's my go to that or McDonald's. But I prefer yeah. Whataburger over McDonald's because they have the hard boiled eggs. Yeah. Oh, wow. I had no idea because I've only tried Whataburger a few times when I lived in I lived in North Texas for five years and I hated Whataburger. <laughs> oh, OK. Yeah. See, prior to carnivore, I mean, I liked Whataburger occasionally, but it yeah. it upset my stomach so much. And honestly, okay. I think it was just the bread. Sure. Because I don't sure. get upset now. Like I eat the patties just fine and I don't get upset. I honestly think it was the burger buns. Sure. I'm, I'm positive, positive. And maybe the ketchup or whatever sauces or whatever. Yeah. It could be the ketchup too. I know there's a lot of sugar and other junk in yeah. the ketchup. Crazy. Um, I, can we talk about PCOS again for a second? Because I actually yeah. don't know what that feels like. I kind of understand what that is, but like, other than the crazy regular period and you have cysts in your ovaries, I understand that. But like, is there like pain associated with it or weight gain? Yes. So okay. typically, so PCOS is basically, basically like you got diabetes. No. And as Dr. I think it was Dr. Shafee or Dr. Kilt, somebody said it was diabetes of the ovaries. Oh, wow. I know. And that is so true because a lot of people that have PCOS end up having diabetes. They kind of go oh. hand in hand. Oh, wow. um, I was never diagnosed with diabetes. And as far as I know, I've, I wasn't like pre-diabetic or anything, but I mean, this is a precursor pr for insulin resistance um, because if you have PCOS, now there is two different types of PCOS. There is oh, okay. classic PCOS and then there's lean PCOS. So there are some women that are lean, lean as can be like skinny as a rail, but they still have PCOS. Mm, um, so okay. it just depends on what type you have. Um, okay. And kind of PCOS is more of like a catch-all 
um, okay. diagnosis because it could be anything like they base it off of if you don't have a normal menstruation. Um, oh. I think there's like right. you have to meet one of the three different criteria to okay. have PCOS. Um, so if you have irregular periods, like you fit that uh, criteria um, and that could be having too many periods, not enough periods, hmm. um, lack of periods. Um, okay. So, yeah, it, it just depends on that. But, yeah, so there are some women that are super skinny and have PCOS. And one of the ways that you find that out, especially if you're super skinny, um, is if you, you know, obviously can't get pregnant and you have fertility oh, okay. issues. And then so that's usually when they find out is they go in okay. to try to have a baby and then they have mm. fertility issues. Um, in my case, I was more of a lean PCOS. Oh, OK. In high school. Yeah, I was the classic all around athlete. So I like played soccer. I ran track. I did cross country. Wow. Um, I had to ride my bicycle to and from school on top of doing athletics class. Um, so that was at least two miles a day that I was biking um, at such a young age. Like I yeah. just was, I was fit. I was lean and fit. So yeah. I didn't realize that I had any issues, but I did have the lack of a period. Um, okay. I had started naturally just like every woman does. Yeah, uh, but then I would stop, and mm. so when I first started my period, I had my period, and then I didn't have one for six months. Oh wow! And I didn't really know that anything was amiss, but I had continued like that for most of my um, adolescence up until adulthood, and I didn't mm -hmm. start having any real difference in uh, my periods or anything until I was about twenty-one. So oh, okay. between 20 and 21, I had started having more uh, heavier periods and more periods of the um, excessive bleeding oh, where wow. I would have a period and then I'd bleed for like a month or two and then it would go away. That's terrible. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so this, so this issue has been an ongoing thing for me. And um, mm -hmm. so it had actually gotten really, really bad before I had conceived my daughter. Like that was just the end all be all. Like I was just on a stretch where I had bled for three months straight and just throwing heavy clots. And, and I had just gotten lucky enough to find a doctor mm -hmm. uh, who was a chief of medicine at one of the highly rated hospitals here in Texas um, of OBGYN. Okay. And he had went to work for a family uh, community, uh, uh, family practice uh, type of medicine. Yeah. And so I got really lucky that he was actually there. Um, and I had actually worked not with him, but I worked in the same company that he worked in uh, because oh, okay. we had the we had health care for free if we went to one of our doctors. Oh, um, so okay. I was very fortunate that I yeah. was able to get in and be one of his patients. And he was actually able to help me. Yeah, um, because I have not really had those excessive uh, issues with the bleeding since I had the DNC and was under his care but he's no longer my doctor now he's Aww. he's uh, resigned from doing that so I'm on the lookout again for a good yeah. OBG <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll find one I'm sure you will um so wow that's crazy with your periods did you have excessive pain by any chance yes so my periods oh. were something that i dreaded and i never knew when i was going to start because you know they were so irregular yeah but i didn't have the classic pms either like most women do where they get the cramping and the bloating and all that beforehand yeah. like a week or yeah. two before they start i never had that mine okay. would just all of a sudden be Boop, here i am uh, you're bleeding wow. <laughs> Caught you off guard. You're out in public, but sorry about you. <laughs> type of thing. So I yeah. would never know when I would start. I would always be caught off guard when I would. And then it just was ferocious, like just cramping, debilitating, cramping, back mm -hmm. cramping, uh, cramping in my abdomen, just all like all over. Just right. not fun. I just felt chronically fatigued, just drained, like somebody just opened a faucet and just let loose of all my energy. I was just oh, man. dead. Um, and it got so bad to, to the point where there were times that I had to call into work and not go to work for a couple of days, sometimes a week oh, wow. at a time, because I was just so bad, especially oh, wow. before I had seen um, the OBGYN, because um, that was the worst of it uh, towards right. the end. That was about, it's about seven years ago. 
roughly. Um, it was prior to me and my husband. Um, actually, it wasn't prior. It was after we had gotten married um, that I had experienced all that. Um, but yeah, so it's been a little while since I've had that issue. Okay. Um, but around seven years is when I sought medical help again and was able yeah. to find somebody to help me. But it oh, was good. bad. Like I had there, I had a written excuse like at work, like ongoing medical condition. Like anytime I called in, I just have to say it was ongoing medical and then I would be covered oh, wow. because it it was that bad. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I people don't get it. <laughs> when like I think people think we're like lying. So I'm so happy you at least had that like in writing thing, like ongoing medical condition, like it's unbelievable because many women don't suffer, but then there's many women that do suffer and they're, it's like, well, I don't suffer. So why are you suffering? Uh, so my, of- my supervisor at the time had a hand in, in getting that set up for me because she oh, actually, good. I had a couple of episodes at work where I had, I called her frantically and I'm like, I have got to go home because yeah. it was just so bad, the bleeding. And I just was soiling myself at work. And, oh, wow. you know, in the medical profession, I mean, you, yeah, you're dealing with patients all day long. You don't want to be right in front of patients like that. And I didn't have any change of clothes. And so she had seen that a couple of times. And she's like, you know what, I'm going to get this set up for you, because this is obviously an issue. And, you know, Aww. we need to be able and have you be able and go home when you can't work. Right. So she, that was a blessing that I had such an yeah. understanding that's, supervisor. Yes. Yes. That's a total blessing. <laughs> yeah. I've, um, I've had some good supervisors in my life. <laughs> aw, I'm happy about that. Um, were you ever put on the pill or anything like this to try to yeah. regulate it? Oh, okay. Yes. So I was on uh, the pill. I tried several different ones of yeah. the low dose. Okay. Um, and this was prior to me meeting the OBG that helped me. Okay. Um, but that was their first course of action. Like, oh, you have PCOS. First line of defense is to put you on birth control. Yeah, I did birth control um, and I was on birth control for about a year, maybe a year and a half at most. Yeah. I could not handle it. No. What happened? I could not do it. I had very high blood pressure and chronic migraines to the point where I was throwing up. Oh, no. And uh, nosebleeds, chronic nosebleeds all the time. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. And so they had changed up the um, birth control for me uh, several different times. So I had tried several different ones. Yeah. Um, and the same thing, I still had those chronic symptoms. Um, and so I was actually in the process of going to get an MRI to see if I had something crazy going on, like a tumor or something that was causing all the migraines and stuff. Oh, wow. Um, and before I did that, I was like, let me just stop my birth control and see if maybe this is the culprit. And yeah. sure enough, no sooner had I quit taking the birth control, all my symptoms had slowed down and then diminished within days. Oh, my and goodness. I was like, okay, so I definitely can't do birth control. So I I'd completely yeah. stopped that. And I have not had birth control um, in quite a long time. I want to say that was... It was It's been about 11 years now, maybe 12. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I think it's closer to 13. Oh, wow. Okay. I think it's closer to 13 years. Yeah. Yeah. So I had a bunch of medical issues that had started popping off about 13 years ago. Um, and the PCOS was one of those. So I was diagnosed with PCOS. I had a rare, uh, rare disease that caused me to have a tumor in my abdomen um, and some other female related issues going on um, all around the same time. And that oh, was wow. about 13 years ago. Okay. And so, yeah, the birth control was definitely causing me some issues with all the other sure. issues that I had had. Oh and goodness. had I known about carnivore back then, I definitely right. would have given it a shot for all the ailments that I had. Cause I'm pretty sure it would have, if not cured me, it would have at least made it tolerable and probably right. would have prevented me from having some major surgery and stuff. Sure. Yeah. I understand. Oh my goodness. That sounds rough. Ah, I used to like, I've always loved being a woman. <laughs> I've loved the makeup, but I would dread the periods. I would dread it. And I didn't understand like why we would have to go through so much pain just to be a woman. But yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> that was um, my sentiment on it. But yeah, yeah, back to the pain thing, like um, my husband has a cousin who has um, endometriosis. No, no, it's the worst. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And so she has 
the chronic pain with her periods and stuff. Mm -hmm. so, and I was comparing my story with hers. And I kid you not, our stories were very similar with the mm -hmm. amount of pain and what we go mm -hmm. through when we have our periods. And like, and I, I wasn't diagnosed with endometriosis or anything like that. Yeah. I just have the PCOS, but we had pretty similar symptoms and pain yeah. and stuff. It's crazy. So it's pretty painful. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I ever actually had that, but I've had like debilitating periods. And and so I did a video about it and someone's like, I think that's what you had. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it could be for sure. And yeah. let me just let me just say this to, so you can kind of get a scope of what my pain is like or sure. was like when I was on the standard American diet having a period. Yeah. yeah. It prepared me for birth because the pain that I had in birth was exactly the pain I go through when I have my periods. Oh my god! I kid you not. I I believe you. Except no, I do believe you. There's no except. Um, I had two C sections, so. Gotcha. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, it was pretty similar because I was I I didn't ever go into labor, so they tried to put me into labor um, through like mer various methods with the first baby, uh, and I did experience a lot of pain, but. Yeah, I think it was pretty similar now that you're explaining it. Like with the Pitocin trying to get me into labor, yeah. uh, I did experience some of that. And then I was like, nope, drugs now. <laughs> See, and I, I can't, your story is different than mine on that with the uh, P Pitocin and all that. Oh, okay. I had an actual delivery with a midwife, oh, so I was I all that. no drugs at all. I love that. So yeah, I, I can't speak for that part, but yeah, definitely was painful <laughs> for sure. But I was prepared. That was the first yeah. thing I told my sister and my mom after I delivered her. I'm like, man, I guess I went through all this for a reason because labor was a piece of cake. Oh, wow. And it was so quick to like, I had her within two hours of my water breaking. And oh, wow. So, so the amount of pain that I experienced was very, very small Okay. for the amount of time that I had you know, delivering her and everything. Sure. Oh, wow. That's lucky. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. I, I was super lucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, at one point I'm like, uh, no. So we did some medicine and the nurse who administered it, some drugs, she's like, see you after you're high. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I do. I do kind of know about that a little bit. Cause when yeah. I had my major uh, abdominal surgery, when they went in and took my mm -hmm. uh, tumor out, Mm -hmm. Um, they did give me a epidural on my first surgery. So I do oh, yeah. know what the epidural is like. Yeah. And how and it numbs really everything. You don't feel yeah. nothing down no. there. <laughs> no, they gave me something before that, some other stuff. I don't know. And it I was probably some stuff to amp up your labor if I had to guess. Oh, probably. Yeah. It was that just maybe some magnesium. Maybe they gave typical. <laughs> but um, no. It was two C sections, but there you go. So I didn't never got to experience that, but but still, I gotcha. I compare my. I I often say I had a tooth operation once, and um, I had to take like a generic Vicodin and Tylenol eight hundred, and my period came. This was in my twenties. My period came at the same time of me taking the medicine. I'm like, oh, I don't feel any pain. Maybe right. I, like. The Vicodin, I don't even, I don't even attribute it to the Tylenol 800. I attributed it to the Vicodin. And I'm like, that's crazy. Like now thinking back, that's crazy. You shouldn't be on a narcotic like that to. For your period. For your period. Yeah. That's not normal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I try not to take anything if I can, but right. Tylenol like doesn't even touch the period right. at all. Like it's. Right. Yeah. It's pretty yeah, I understand. This I'm gonna have to title this like an extremely female conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> but, oh, by the way, and carnivore. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, since I've gone carnivore, man, my my periods, they've definitely changed. Like the amount of pain that I have with it is like it's a night and day difference. I kid you oh, not. Wow. Yeah, no, I, I believe you. I'm like, I wish that I had started this many, many, many years ago because mm -hmm. I could have just been a happy, happy person on my time of the month and not be miserable and sad right. and laying in my bed the whole time. Totally. I understand. Oh, my goodness. That's what I experienced. I guess I'm lucky. I experienced that within 21 days. My period came earlier and it surprised me. I do get funny cramps sometimes totally randomly down there that aren't my period, but it's not the same pain as it was before. Yeah. But when my period comes, it's like, 
what? This is like almost nothing. Yeah, it's not as it's it's not as hard on you physically, I don't think. Yeah. Being carnivore. Like it's just somehow. It's it's more enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny that you can say it's more enjoyable? Like Yeah, because who enjoys can... having a period? But yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it, it definitely oh, makes okay. it manageable for sure yeah yeah if you can like live life and just be like a normal human being while your body's doing its regular process it's like amazing yes <laughs> and i used to envy the ladies that could just have their period and just go about their normal life with no issues right. i'm like man i wish i could be that person and now i am starting to become that person because i love that i'm not held back by it and debilitated by it so it's great yeah. Oh, that is great. Uh, so funny me and how my mind works. I just thought something was wrong with me. Like I assumed like everybody cramps were the same for everybody and that I just couldn't deal with the pain, but everybody else was a lot better at it. <laughs> yes. I had thought the same too. So oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, I just thought it was me being ultra wimpy. <laughs> Right. You, oh man, no, it's just not normal, but I'm so happy that the carnivore diet is uh, decreased the pain and made it more regular. And I'm sure baby number two, maybe baby two and three will come at the same time. <laughs> maybe I, I, I would like to have twins and just be done. I <laughs> have two, two babies or not two babies, but two pregnancies come full term and just have three kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, afterwards it's a lot of work, but, but still. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot of work, but I mean, I have five kids during the summertime, so. Oh, okay. What's two more <laughs> or one more? <laughs> Are you taking care of family? Yeah, so I watch. Uh, so my brother-in-law works for us with with our pest control company, and I watch okay. um, his and my sister's kids oh, um, okay. during the summer, and then I have their youngest one, um, who is he just turned one years old um so i would i would have had two babies at the same time had i not lost mine because mm -hmm. i would have had my sister's kid yeah. um, and then my baby um but that's okay because he's a blessing and i, I love the time yeah. i get to spend with him um i'm like his second mom because i've been with him since he was three months old yeah um but Aww. yeah so he's got a, a baby that's just turned a year old and then her other yeah. uh three kids um are older i think seven ten and thirteen um are their ages and so i watch them during the summer and then i have the youngest one all year round oh fun. with my baby she she's <laughs> yeah. not gone to school yet so she helps me with him and she just oh, okay. loves her little cousin yeah i'm sure oh that's adorable um okay so let's see we talked about PCOS. So, oh, you told me in an email, how, what do you eat? Uh, how, what do you eat daily? How many times do you eat or generally? Um, so I kind of fluctuate between OMAD and two a day. Okay. Um, it just depends on me and when I'm hungry. And then also with my busy life, when I get to sit down and take a chance to eat. Right. Um, but I really just let my body tell me. Um, I used to be one of those people prior to carnivore where I had to eat as soon as my feet hit the ground. Mm -hmm. Like I had to mm -hmm. eat something or I was going to be shaky and sick to my stomach. And right. then I had to eat every two hours on the hour or I would start feeling bad and get the shakes and get my stomach just felt like it was eating itself. And mm -hmm. I just would not feel good. I'd get a headache and, and all of that. Oh, wow. Um, but now I can go, like I can wake up and just start doing my daily, whatever stuff without having to worry about eating. Um, I just eat when I get hungry. Matter of fact, today I've been pretty much fasting, not by choice, but mm -hmm. I've been pretty much fasting, which is something I could have never done prior to carnivore. Oh, I, wow. I felt like I was dying after not eating for two hours. So there's no way I could try to do even a day fast yeah. or in, even intermittent fasting um, yeah. when I was on standard. Okay. And when we were doing like the paleo diet, was it similar that you felt like you had to eat every couple hours? Yes. I still oh, okay. had to eat every, every couple of hours because I just, I don't know if it was like my blood pressure or my blood uh, sugar just dropping too much. Yeah. Would make me feel that way. Like, yeah. cause you hear people that have like low insulin levels or whatever, say that they get shaky and, and like, they just start feeling really bad. And that's yeah. kind of how I would feel after two hours okay. of not having something to eat. 
Wow. And I would get hangry. I kid you not. My husband would, he did <laughs> not like taking me to eat somewhere whenever I was hangry. Cause I was just mad. I'm like, just feed me, just feed me now. I need to eat something. I'm going to die. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, he, he did not like being around me whenever I was on standard American diet and I was hungry. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> oh man, it's crazy how like eating the wrong foods totally screw with you. <laughs> yes. And and I know now too, because I've tried to introduce stuff back in um, here yeah. and there. And I definitely know what has bothered me. Okay. Um, like here recently, I had went out to my favorite Mexican food place and I had gotten... Um, just some simple enchiladas um, yeah. and a tortilla and yeah. some uh, chips and salsa, which I know none of that's carnivore, but I was like, <laughs> you know, I've been doing carnivore for a year. I want to, I want to try it. Sure. It's this craving I've been having for the salsa. Yeah. And, uh, I greatly regretted it. I loved the food when I was eating it. It felt great when sure. I was eating it, but uh, I regretted it a few hours later. Oh man. Yeah. I call it mouth pleasure. You want the mouth pleasure, but it's a terrible idea. <laughs> and that's definitely what it was. It definitely was a mouth pleasure for sure. Cause I regretted yeah. it after that. And I was like, yep, we're not doing this again. <laughs> yeah. I, I sometimes remind myself, like I had some popcorn. <laughs> if you listen to my. <laughs> oh, I, I can't do popcorn. popcorn. Even prior oh. to carnivore, I couldn't yeah. really do the popcorn. Cause it just upset my stomach so bad. Oh, okay. I make popcorn at home, but I had some last week and it, Within like 24 hours, it flared up my eczema. I'm like, all right. I believe it. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't, you can't oh, digest my that stomach. stuff. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And my stomach. I'm remembering now my stomach and I couldn't sleep. And I was like, oh, why did I do this again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's amazing what your body can and can't do. And mm -hmm. how we just, with the standard American diet, we just have so much stuff in our diet. We can't pinpoint what it is that's making us right. feel bad. But when right. you take all that stuff out and then slowly like introduce things back in one at a time, just being able to, to see what actually makes your body feel inflamed and hurts and right. just like, it's crazy how it, how that does. It's crazy. Like I, I can eat pickles. There's no good pickles where I live. So that's not like something I eat very often. Just when I go visit home in Chicago uh, and I can eat avocados and that's fine. <laughs> but I don't really eat them. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I've reintroduced um, a little bit of strawberries and raspberries and blackberries here and there because my daughter, yeah. that's one of her favorite things is to eat frozen, okay. frozen berries. Yeah. Um, so I do keep those on hand for her and occasionally I'll grab one of her berries and eat them. But yeah, I mean, I kind of don't like it because I feel it. Oh, you do feel it? Yeah, just the little bit of fiber. Like, I can feel it oh. in my stomach. Like, I can tell it just upsets my stomach. Oh, wow. It's crazy. Yeah, I think when I th it's like PCOS is like autoimmune. It's like an autoimmune condition. Um, it's like a, it's a metabolic issue. Oh, it's metabolic. So it's, it's more along the lines of uh, like insulin resistance type of things, oh, metabolic okay. for sure. Uh, okay. But there may be some uh, immune components to it as well. I'm not sure on that, but I know it's more oh, okay. of a metabolic condition. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Cause I know like endometriosis, like I said, I've never been diagnosed with it, but my grandmother had something very bad, similar apparently for my mom. Uh -huh. And she was told she was never going to have kids, but basically she said, no, I'm going to have kids. And she proceeded to have six kids. And then my wow. mom <laughs> yeah. And good for her. Uh, my mom also had like a similar thing to me that went away after she had kids and my sister didn't experience this and she doesn't think her sisters experienced it, but apparently it could be genetic, some genetic component to it. Yes. And so, I believe that too, because my mom yeah. had issues conceiving children, mm. um, prior to getting pregnant with me. Um, she had had, I think it was two miscarriages mm -hmm. um, prior to me, but she had to take Clomid in order to conceive me. And then okay. after she had me, boom, 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 she just popped them out. She had five of us total living children. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I was hoping that that was the case for me whenever yeah. I went down this route of trying to have kids, but yeah, not necessarily. I have not had the best of luck with it. I'm very fortunate to have the one that yeah. I do have. Um, and hoping that carnivore can help fix 
the remainder of my fertility issues and then maybe we can make our family feel 100% whole. Not that we're not whole now because we are yeah. the three of us, but she definitely needs a sibling for sure. Sure. That's she has cousins that. and she loves her cousins that come over on a daily basis, but she, she needs that sibling for sure. Yeah, I understand. I'm really hoping it works out very, very soon for you. Well, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. But yeah, that that was the whole reason why I kind of went down this journey. And then all the other stuff that has come with it has just been a blessing, like just yeah. because of the diet. So yeah, it's crazy. It's it, it blows my mind how many things changed for me and so fast. Uh, so I love talking about it. I feel I have a passion for talking to people about and hearing their stories and like trying to share them as best as I can because yeah. a lot of people, especially women, nobody listens. I always, I always complain. I always uh, bitch about this, that nobody watches my period videos. <laughs> I did actually watch one of your period videos. <laughs> and then also that it was a, I think it was a 24 hour live stream with Carrie Mann. Yeah. Um, that you were talking briefly about your issues. And so I was like, I have got to get in touch with her. Aww. But I, I'm hoping that like in the carnivore community that we can get more women, like even if it's just a woman based community that is carnivore, like to talk about endometriosis and right. PCOS and fertility and all that, because like I'm out here trying to do this journey and I would like to know right. what somebody in a similar situation has experienced with their journey sure. um, as far as going carnivore and then conceiving and pregnancy yeah. and all of that. So sure. I'm hoping that we can have our own little niche community come, yeah. come out of the carnivore group. <laughs> I hope so. I hope to find some more, some more ladies. Um, yeah. Carrie has a daughter. I talked to her, not, she didn't want to record it. So we just did a zoom and chatted for a while. Cause I wanted to see if I could help her. Cause she also had endometriosis has endometriosis. So yeah. it's just nice to just support one another because then you realize you're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. And everybody's suffering in silence on their own, thinking that they're yeah. the only one like this. But no, there's there's many of us out here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I think actually, by the way, I didn't I need to ask this question again. So, like, what exactly do you eat? Um, yes. So I was actually gonna allude back to that too, because we kind of okay, went off yeah, on we, a tangent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have been eating recently, I've changed it up to ribeye. Okay. Um, the last week I've just been craving ribeye rib for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, but my main thing um, was chuck, uh, the chuck roast. Yeah. I get the roast and cut them into steaks because it's okay. budget friendly and you get the prat, the fat profile. It's mm -hmm. not as good as a ribeye as far as the fat profile goes, but it's sure. pretty comparable. Okay. And like I said, it's budget friendly because I can get about six steaks out of one chuck roast. Okay. Instead of. Like for the price of a ribeye, <laughs> I get about three steaks. So yeah, I, I, I try to do what's for my budget, but mainly I've just been, I guess you could say lion for the most part. Oh, wow. Um, Because meat is just the most, what I eat the most. Okay. Um, But I do add in eggs occasionally when I feel like I want eggs. Um, I do. The only thing that keeps me from being mostly lion is dairy. Um, oh, okay. I do have a... A slight addiction for my heavy cream. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, and I'm trying to work on that because I'm thinking yeah. if I cut that out, then maybe that might get me where I need to be overall with yeah. everything. I'm um, curious. Yeah. But yeah, the I got to do something about the heavy cream. But right now, like, it's a crutch for me. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to 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 get away from it if I can. Is um, it and like then occasionally. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Is it in your coffee the cream? Um, so I don't really do coffee. Um, oh, okay. Here recently, so because of working nights, I do do coffee occasionally. Oh, okay. and I've been a bad girl. I've gone to Dutch Rose and got me a Coke, uh, not a Kokomo, but a, a Mocha Freeze, which is basically chocolate milk <laughs> uh, with a hint of coffee in it. And oh, it, okay. it's like a, a Frappuccino kind of drink. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so I've, I've been bad with that. With coffee. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I've been bad with that, but I've I found something to kind of curb that. And I do occasionally do coffee with the heavy cream in it. Oh, but okay. I like my heavy cream in the coffee. I don't necessarily like the coffee. I like the heavy cream with the coffee. So I have yeah. more cream than I do coffee. Oh, if okay. If that makes sense. 
totally yes um but here recently i've gotten the um chocolate salt um lmnt mm. um, electrolytes and so okay. what i'll do is i'll make that with the water and then i'll put a little bit of heavy cream in it to make it more like chocolate milk oh okay <laughs> and so so that's been curbing me from going and buying an actual Good. drink that has chocolate milk and god knows how much sugar in it because right it has sugar from the chocolate milk and from the coffee mix that they make sure um because you know that's what the coffee businesses do they load you up with sugar that's that's their business is sugar basically with the yeah, side of coffee <laughs> that's crazy not in colombia it's actually coffee but yes, gotcha. in the side for sure. <laughs> yeah, American coffee is definitely like you got your craft coffees and oh, all of yeah. this that has it's loaded with loads of stuff. So I've been trying to get better about not indulging and going into that. Which I, when I went uh, carnivore, I did cold turkey and I was itching for one of those, but I had finally got over the hump and I didn't right. need one and I hadn't had one until I had went back to doing doing the night thing and I'm like, yeah, I need I need a coffee. But okay, I have I have found a way to curb that so i'm curbing it right. now it, i just need to taper back on the heavy cream <laughs> <laughs> but yeah understand. so when i don't have heavy cream in my diet um or any type of dairy i'm mostly just lying oh okay uh, okay occasionally i'll have the hard-boiled eggs and then like i like to do um scrambled eggs from time to time um i get the uh duck fat Mm. Um, and I will cook up, uh, my eggs in the duck fat and yeah. butter with salt and oh my God, it is a game changer for eggs. Really? Oh yeah. man, I gotta get duck fat. It I is so like, it just, it's rich and flavorful. Like it just gives you a whole new taste to your eggs. It's oh, better wow. than just eggs that are just salted and peppered. Like, <laughs> it, it's a game try. changer. So like. <laughs> Those are it. Like when I'm eating eggs, I'm craving them because I'm wanting that duck fat and the butter. Right. Like it's just a smooth, rich, buttery, just fills your soul <laughs> type of egg. Like with with that, that in there. <laughs> that it's just so, so creamy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that sounds so good. I eat a lot of eggs. I eat a ridiculous amount of eggs. I think compared to a lot of people, six at least on average, six a day. Maybe gotcha. More. Yeah. See, I'm not even doing that. I go through spurts where um, it'll be like a week at a time where I'll maybe have eggs two or three times that week. Um, oh, but okay. I'll go for several weeks, if not a month or two without having eggs. Okay. So it's, I'm mainly just the meat portion. Okay. And I've so, got, oh, sorry. yeah, ribeye and chuck roast steaks um, are my go-to. I will do London broil. Um, but those don't have really a high fat content. So if I do those, I do the Wagyu beef okay. um, because it does kind of have a higher fat content than a regular London broil. Yeah. Uh, but those, I do those when I want just more of meat and less fat. Okay. Um, cause sometimes I feel like I have too much fat and so I want to do a little bit leaner. So I'll do a little leaner with the London broil. And so I'll throw that in the mix every once in a while. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are my three main uh, meats that I choose. And then I'll do ground beef occasionally. Um, and then to change it up, I'll do bison and ground lamb. Oh, okay. Um, I really like the ground lamb and the ground bison mixed together because of yeah. the, the flavor profile. Yeah. Uh, the bison kind of tones down the lamb profile a little bit. Okay. Um, but you mix them both together and you get those two flavors mixed up. And it, it just, it adds a different. <laughs> different it's a game changer on your meat it changes it sure. up so you're not eating the same thing every day sure that's a good it's a good tip um have you ever tried ground brisket <laughs> i'm trying no, to know i have not tried the ground brisket so you just go to wherever you get your brisket or your meat and you get them to grind it up and you can have like a brisket burger in five minutes and it's definitely gotcha. different than just ground beef it for sure is different than just buying your regular like costco ground beef or whatever See, and I do, fat. I do love my brisket meat. Um, yeah. I don't get that as often because I don't have a pit to smoke it. Yeah. It's so hard to cook otherwise. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I have heard of people cooking it in an Instapot and a crock pot. Um, I have. <laughs> it's not the I, same. 
for sure. But if you're on the carnivore diet and you want some food in 25 minutes, throw brisket in the Instant Pot. <laughs> Is it nice and tender that way? Yeah, yeah. High okay, pressure. that's that's why I haven't tried it because I haven't. I didn't know if it was going to be not, nice and juicy and tender. <laughs> it is, um, but it's not the same as how you want it. But the brisket burger is like, we we get it every week now or every couple, whenever we go shopping. Gotcha. We'll I'll have to try burger. that. Yeah, That it's, sounds it's, good. And then that was my other thing too. Um, oh. Burger patties. Like when I'm in a pinch, like yeah. I'm out running errands with the kids, um, I'll swing through the drive-thru and get some burger patties. But um, you can't beat a home home burger patty. And here recently oh. I've been having my uh, husband cook up some burger patties when we go out to my dad's house. Cause he's got one of those nice uh, Blackstone grills. Nice. So we'll, we'll get uh pre uh, molded burger patties. It's just hundred percent pure beef okay. and uh, he'll cook those up and man, they are so good. Yeah. Wow. Sounds so good. <laughs> I can't do these interviews afterwards. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'll get the carnivore diet. I only really think of food when I'm hungry, except when I do these interviews. <laughs> and <then> right. I'm <laughs> and I'm sorry, I keep going on about my food, but it's because I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and that's totally fine. Um, I mean, we're almost at an hour, so we'll end soon. Um, I just curious, like, what's your husband think about you doing eating this way? Or what did he think at the beginning? And what does he think now? Um, at the beginning, he's like, do whatever fits you. And then as I continued, he's like, man, how do you eat that? Like, how do you not eat something different? I'm like, it's just what I want. And I feel good doing it. So I continue yeah. to do it. But also to alluding to that, um, I have actually changed going carnivore, how I like my steaks. Sure. So I'm more <laughs> of eating raw meat. Yeah. Per se. Sure. I, I get my steaks from the store. I pop them out of the package. I uh, take a paper towel to them to dry up the moisture, salt them up, rack them, throw them in the fridge, let them age for a day or two. That's so good. Uh, and then I put them in a skillet with some uh, beef tallow and just sear them on both sides for anywhere from two to four minutes. Get a nice, yeah. good, crispy sear on them. And then I eat them and they're pretty raw. <laughs> But that's I how I like them. Yeah. They that's taste how I better like that way. Totally. Oh, my gosh. An overcooked steak is terrible. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. When I first started transitioning, because it was a slow process for me to get to where I'm at today as far as eating sure. them that way. Yeah. Um, but I had put some of my steaks in the oven uh, because they had gotten frozen in my fridge, ironically. Yeah. So I had <laughs> to thaw them um, so that they could properly sear. And my husband had made the mistake of turning the oven on and I forgot to tell him that they were in there. Yeah. And so I had overcooked steaks and oh I God. ate them. I'm like, these are disgusting. <laughs> so I just chopped them up and I let my daughter eat them because she'll eat them. And I was like, here you go. You got food for a couple of days. And I just went ahead and started over from scratch because I was like, I can't do these overcooked no. steaks. <laughs> No, totally not. Uh, I agree with you completely. Um, okay. So last, last but not least, is there anything else you want to like communicate or say uh, about carnivore or PCOS or women out there that might want to jump on this wagon with us? Um, yeah. If you're starting carnivore, it's, it's worth it. Um, your spouse may not agree with it or might look at you a little crazy, but it's definitely worth it. Um, and there are women out here that are in the same position that you are. Mm -hmm. um, so don't be afraid to to take over your own health and do what's right for you. Exactly. Wow, that's lovely. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for talking to me today. I, uh, I'm going to hope we get this video out to many thousands of people and women yes. who need some help. Yeah. Yes.